while back I made this video, which is probably the video that most of my subscribers have come from because it's the only video that's um, actually gotten a somewhat bigger amount of views and that video bothers me so much. So basically, <clears throat> I made this princess dress a while back and the idea of it was very cute and it did not look cute on and it did not last very long in my household because at the time it lived in my storage room because our house is very small and I need a place to store my sewing stuff. Basically what happened is I had a bunch of tool in that and since it was in my storage room, that's where a lot of our spiders like to live and spiders basically decided that that dress seemed like a very good home for them to live in and so they moved into the skirt and just kind of stayed there and I was like, well, how am I supposed to get these spiders out? I'm not going to like go through all of the layers of tool and try to fish them out with my hands because that's gross. So basically what I did is I was like, oh, I'll just leave it outside overnight so the spiders just kind of like move out and just kind of like leave the dress and that didn't happen more spiders moved in and we got even some mosquitoes living in it so basically in the course of one day we had over 20 spiders living in that dress and i was just not gonna fix it because how do you fix that so basically it ended up um getting thrown away and i needed to release a video that week and i had all the footage and i didn't want to waste it so i compressed it into a video and the audio was super boring and <laughs> the dress didn't look at all and i was like okay well this won't go anywhere but it's fine and then people watched it. So yes, I do get some weird form of fulfillment from trying to redeem myself with a different princess dress, but it's supposed to be similar. So this is basically me remaking that dress to fit a little bit better. So yeah, that, that that's basically the story of why I'm making this video, but yeah, let's get on to it. <laughs> Start first with cutting out all of your shapes. Lay it on your fabric. You're gonna do this to every single piece. Some you have two, some you only have to do one. Do it with your top fabric and your lining fabric. Here's a quick show of what all I did with the shapes and everything. I just kind of did it off my body size. But you're going to go ahead and start sewing together all those parts. Basically, you'll just do edge to edge. You want to make sure you have the top layer on top of the bottom layer as it's just going to make it a lot quicker to go through. Um, but go ahead and sew those sections together and then you'll get started on the cups and they kind of want to come out in an open motion where it's not completely flat it wants to be circular so that way you can kind of fold it onto the bra lining that you will be using for the cups and you can kind of see here um, I'm just gonna go through and pin it in place so you can kind of see what I did it's pretty self-explanatory easier to just watch Next, you just go ahead and put the cups in the correct place. I had it overlapping with my fabric as I was going to cover it with interfacing anyway to increase the boning channels, but that way it made it a little easier. So I went ahead and sewed that on. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and lay out my skirt, see how much fabric I needed. I definitely underestimated how much I was going to use, but it ended up being okay in the end. But go ahead and lay down your fabric, cut it to where it is. You'll want a little bit more tool as the tool is going to stick out a little bit further. So add a couple inches to what you originally thought you were going to need and then go ahead and sew it into place as you can see here i was gathering it this was not the correct way i should have gathered it and you will see later on in the video why that is but this is the bottom layer of the skirt go ahead and gather your skirt like this because it's going to make it a lot more full and you'll see later on why that is but here i'm just going to go ahead and pin on the bottom layer of tulle onto the top layer of the skirt. I wanted the two tiered section so I went ahead and did it in two parts and here you can just kind of see I'm going to go ahead and quickly pin it on and sew it in place and since I'm a baby I don't know how to use grommets and <laughs> I'm too scared to learn and ruin my fabric so I just went ahead and used some ribbon. I went and just overlapped it so that when I do the lacing in the back it'll fit a little bit better and I can pull it tighter but you want to make sure you evenly space out where the lacing is going to be and you can play with this as much as you need but you're going to just make a straight stitch down the side to secure it in place and then yeah just lace up the back now that i'm watching this video i now can understand why some people think i have red hair i don't think it's normally red but in this picture it does kind of look a little red but here i'm just going to go ahead and add in some flowers i had little pearl beads just to kind of make it a little bit more princessy kind of add in the fairy aspect just because that's kind of how I went with my last princess dress so I wanted to incorporate it this time as well but this is the fun part where you can kind of get creative and decorate it however you would like so <clears throat> sorry I'm getting sick again this dress looks like 
a pink flattened down version of the Liberty Bell. So we're gonna do some undoing of a lot of fabric right now and make the skirt a little more poofy. I'm gonna edit a lot of this dress right now and I'm hoping I hold on to what little mental strength I have to finish this project. But we're gonna do it anyway. Okay, so update. I fixed it, it, it for the most part. It's got more flow, a little bit more princessy. So basically all that I did is I seam ripped all of this and I originally had had this under layer fabric, no, eh, this folded in half just because I thought it was going to give it a little more of a oomph and it didn't, it just made it a stiff board. So I literally just cut it in half when I had enough to take it in more and go all the way around. So yeah. And then I did, had done the same thing with this top layer of tool. And yeah, the same thing again. I was able to gather a little bit more. Um, the only thing I did different is I did hem the top of these so I could just put it on the outside instead of when I was putting it opposite sides, kind of like if I were to sew like that. I just put it on right on the top and just sewed straight because I kind of liked this little ruffle effect. Um, especially on the bottom layer here, if you can kind of see. I just really liked the look of that. I think it just added a little more texture. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. I think next, I'm probably going to work on the sleeves um, and getting a little bit of the puff going. So that's where we're at currently. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I did for the sleeves because that was the next part and originally I'd recorded it and it deleted so pretend we didn't do that. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to fold our fabric and then where it says fold is where you're going to line it up. You're going to do this overall shape. You want it to be oversized as we are going to use elastic to take it in to give it the poof side. So where the green arrows is is where the, where the elastic is going to go to tighten it. The top arrow is where the shoulder is the bottom is around the bicep area and the yellow is just kind of where it's going to be just straight sewed to close around the armpit enclosure so as you can see with the uh, what i'm showing in the video is i start with a basting stitch and that way i can just kind of pull it and start the gather i had a lot more fabric than i intended but it did look better having extra so i just kind of gathered the fabric initially so there was some space and then i went ahead and used my elastic i pulled it slightly as i was going and this elastic measured from my back to the front of my shoulder and then I also did the same thing around the bicep and you just want it so that it's snug around your arm but not too tight that it's uncomfortable. This way that the puff sleeve is going to stay a little bit better up and also help hold the dress up which is going to make it a little bit more secure which is great. But yeah, go ahead and just sew in the elastics. And here I'm just going to kind of pin where I wanted it to be on my mannequin um, so that I knew where to sew it on. And I actually just went ahead and hand stitched the sleeves on because I was worried I was going to slip it around a little too much with the sewing machine. But you can do it either way if you feel comfortable that way. And here's the final reveal. Do the princess wave. No. That one? Oh. There you go. Oh, I also forgot to say I had started making this green dress. Um, that was definitely more St. Patrick's Day this past month, and so that's been done. And I started this Valentine's Day super last minute. 
um, the Valentine's Day dress, but yeah, basically I just wanted to say happy Valentine's Day. I hope you did something fun. That's all. Okay, bye.